Hey everyone, Coach Investor here back to another video for today. So as we're approaching earnings season, as always, a special company has a special place in our hearts because, well, previously it either broke the market when it comes to advertising companies such as Meta, Pinterest, Google, etc. It's called Snapchat or Snap Inc. Usually they report earnings before everybody else. This time, if the information that I've seen is correct, we first will have Meta, then Pinterest, and then we're going to get Snapchat earnings, which means Meta and Pinterest might actually dictate what happens with the advertising environment when it comes to publicly traded stocks, companies, and then Snapchat, whatever they report, well, will hopefully be disregarded because maybe more focus will be on what Meta and Pinterest have reported, which was not the case in the past. In the past, it was Snapchat who reported earnings first, which if you've been following along in the last couple of quarters, it was horrible. And so it took down every other advertising company with it. What seems to be the logical move, let's say, turned out to be not logical at all. Because after that, you've seen that, well, the downward pressure, the headwinds that Snapchat saw, you could not really see it with other companies, for example, the Trade Desk. So let's wait and see what happens in the coming weeks. So first up, I want to start off with two analyst notes. Well, actually, there's not that much to talk about about the first one. The only information I got here is that Snap downgraded to mixed from positive view at OTR Global. So nothing really much we can work with here. But then before we got a downgrade to market perform from outperform at GMP Securities, so the analysts there downgraded Snap to market perform from outperform without a price target. The analysts reduced estimates again, citing declining US time spent on Snap, as you can see on the screen, which he believes is a direct consequence of increased competition from Reels and YouTube Shorts. The analyst now prefers shares of Meta and Google over Snap, saying both have more mature short-term video products, which he expects to attract more user time over the next few years. Short form video platforms are taking share of time from Snapchat, which I totally agree. I think shorts, the last couple of months has actually exploded. In my opinion, if you look at some, let's say popular gaming shorts or even other sections on YouTube, they get hundreds of thousands of views, if not even millions of views. And some of these numbers you don't even see on TikTok. Now with Reels, of course, still ramping up monetization wise, Still not that great. Let's see what happens when Meta report earnings. But I still believe even under $10 Snapchat, let's be honest to me personally, I don't think it's investable. Now, before I continue and explain why, well, I'll explain both sides, all right? I'll explain the positive and the negative side. But before I do so, I would really appreciate it if you hit that thumbs up button and subscribe if you have not. And if you want to support me and this channel, do check out the link down in the description and in the pinned comment to get the top 10 best stocks to buy now or go to full.com for a slash couch investor. So this is Snap right now. So $15 billion market cap, forward PE 35.8. Stock right now, stock price is at $9.43 at the time of making this video. Revenue in the last 12 months, $4.6 billion, growing a little bit in the last couple of quarters, of course. Now, and here comes the positive thing. Since 2022 was such a bad year, we've talked about that with Pinterest, with PayPal as well. So the year-over-year -year comparisons in 2023 should be easier, especially in the back half of the year. So usually what happens when suddenly you see growth increase on the year-over-year, -year, let's say, aspect, the market sees it as a positive thing. Of course, it still has to execute and perform well to be able to grow year-over-year, -year, let's say, double digits because last year was such a bad year. Let's wait and see. Now, with regards to free cash flow in the last 12 months, it is currently still positive. Let's see if, if that can stay in a positive area because, again, growth is slowing down, expenses are increasing. So, free cash flow might be negative in the coming quarters. Return on equity has never been positive, it's now negative 35%. Gross profit margins in the last 12 months sits at 61.5%. Then the price to sales ratio in the next 12 months is 3.1 times, not that expensive, especially if you compare it, well, historically. But to me personally, if you want, I can compare this. I won't compare this to Meta 
because it's two different businesses completely. One is a giant, the other not that much. But for the sake of this video, let's pop up the comparison. So, of course, from a revenue standpoint, free cash flow, return on equity, gross profit margin, everything here goes Meta's way. Even if you look right now in price to sales ratio next 12 months, Meta beats Snap just by 0.1. So 3.1 times Snap, 3 times Meta. And to me, Meta has a lot of tailwinds in 2023, but that's just me personally. Now, continuing here, we're talking about advertising dollars. Obviously, we're talking about advertising companies. So when I found this, I found it extremely strange that Snap is the most expensive platform to advertise on by some margin. TikTok is the cheapest one. Maybe that's also why they're losing so much money. Instagram Reels, pretty expensive, more expensive than the feet, which I find it also very weird. So I don't know how very accurate this report is. It's sourced from Viner Media, so okay, maybe that's why, but it comes from the Financial Times, so I don't know. Let's see what happened, but still, Snap being so high here, to me, doesn't make any sense. And then this is a picture that basically shows us the most downloaded apps in couple of countries so worldwide Instagram is number one Snapchat number five then in the United States Snapchat is nowhere near the number five here Brazil no Snapchat Japan no Snapchat India Snapchat is number three again India monetizable not that much UK number five France number five as well Germany not in the top five either now with regards to last quarter, we can see here that average daily active users, globally, it grew 19% year over year. If you look at North America and Europe, basically it is plateauing a little bit quarter over quarter, year over year, you still have double digit growth in Europe, just 4% growth in North America, but the big push here is rest of the world. As you can see, 34% growth year over year, also nice little growth quarter over quarter. But again, rest of the world usually is not that good when it comes to monetization. As you can clearly see right here with ARPU, average revenue per user, globally, it's down 11% year over year. In North America, it's down 1%. In Europe, it's down 5%. Rest of the world, it's down 9%. And if you compare, you can see that rest of the world in that quarter was 89 cents, much lower than all the rest. Of course, with the current let's say market situation, advertising dollars, well, companies are just spending less. So, okay, you might say this is the logical numbers that you can see, a decrease year over year, because one year before there was excess cash, so advertisers were just advertising everywhere. Today, they're a bit more selective to where they're going, which goes into my next point, let's say. Why should they go to Snapchat when there is more success at Reels and YouTube, and maybe even TikTok? It's a question. And now before I conclude this video, obviously, let's have a look at the graph. We can see that right now we're just where we were back in 2020 during that COVID quickly crash there. Then right now, the stock is maybe forming a nice little base here between, let's say, 8 and $11 or so. Right now, if I'm zooming in, we can see that the stock currently sits just above that 20-day moving average. Let's see what happens in the week to come. Of course, earnings might be a big catalyst, big green candle over that means we're going to go over the 20 and the 50 day moving average. Then let's try and go over 12, $13, which was the previous resistance. Obviously, the 200 day moving average is still far, far away. From an RSI standpoint, we're still fine here, 39. From MACD standpoint, it is bullish, but still under the zero. So take that in consideration if you're looking at technical stuff. Overall, me personally, I'm staying away from Snap. I think there's better opportunities out there with Alphabet, with Meta, even with Pinterest. But those are just my thoughts. Obviously, do share yours down in the comments below. If you enjoy this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.